Today's lesson is 8-4, solving more two-step equations. So we learned about how to solve two-step equations a few days ago. There's also a few other types of equations out there, and they're kind of putting it into today, to today's lesson. Um, it, the good news is it's things we've learned before, so it shouldn't be too difficult to follow along. And, to, and you have a choice today of how you want to solve these problems, and you can decide what works best for you. So before we get started, I just want to review distributed property with you. This was last chapter, and it's going to keep showing up. Um, let's just remind each other how to solve something if there's distributed property involved. So if I have four parentheses, D plus 8, a lot of you would tell me, first let's put a 1 in front of the D, and then go ahead and multiply throughout. So this would look like 4D plus 32. And then you can't go any farther, you have to stop. Uh, if I look at this one, we have to remember our trick. So a lot of you would tell me to first put a 1 there. And then negative 2 times 1 would be negative 2C. And then a lot of us went to the trick where we say, okay, this is negative 2 and a negative 9. And if I multiply those together, I get a positive 18, so it would be plus 18. So remembering those tricks today is a really important thing. And I'll just do, just I'm just going to throw a quick another one in here. Okay. If I multiply here, it would be negative 6D. Now if I have a negative and a positive here, it would be a negative 12, so that would be like minus 12. So we've got to remember those tricks today because if we don't, when we start to solving, um, you won't get the correct answer. Now today, most of your assignment will look like this. Many of the problems will look like this. This is 4 parentheses x plus 3 equals 28. Now last year we solved these as well, and I showed you two ways to solve them. And the first way... I'm going to talk about is distributive, and then many of you will like this way. I mean, this is just probably the default way. If you had to look at a question like this, you would solve it using this way. So I'm just going to quick go through of how to do that again. Okay, so the distributive way, you're just going to distribute the 4 throughout here, and it becomes 4x plus 12 equals 28. Then it becomes a two-step equation that you know how to do. Your minus your 12, minus your 12, and what you have left over here is 16. And then you divide by 4, divide by 4, just like what we did the other day, x is 4. So this is one way you can solve. If you use the distributive method, it's going to ultimately bring it to that two-step equation that we've been solving. The other way we talked about was division. And I wish somebody would have showed me this when I was young because this is a way that was not talked about too often. And that's why I think I always default to the distributive way. So if I look at this, I'm really taking 4 times whatever in my parentheses, just like what we did in the distributed way. 4 times whatever is in my parentheses equals 28. Well, if I want to get rid of that 4 and just have that x plus 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 4 on this side. That eliminates that 4. And then I have to do it on the other side. Remember, because because it's like a balance, you do if you do one thing, you have to do the other side. So now I know this is 7, but I'm not done yet because I'm going to bring this down and do x plus 3 equals 7. And then it's just a one-step equation, minus 3, minus 3, and I still get x equals 4. Some of you might really, really like distributive way, and some of you might go back to the division way. And you can decide which works the best for you. I'm not going to lie, though. This way right here is easiest for fractions and decimals, and I will show you why in a few slides. So let's do another one here. Why don't you go ahead and you try this one yourself. You're either going to pick the distributive way or you're going to pick the division way. And like I said, it does not matter to me what you do as long as you pick a way and you stick with it. I will do both for you. Now, like I said before, it's really important to remember our tricks because if we don't remember our tricks in the distributive way, then you're going to come up with a total different two-step equation that will not give you the correct answer. So I'm going to just start. This would be negative 2y, and then negative 2 times a negative 3 would be a positive 6 equals 22. And then I can start dividing, or subtracting minus 6 minus 6. I get negative 2y equals 18. No, wait, that's not 18. 16. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, y equals negative 8. 
the division way would look like this. I'm going to divide by negative 2 because I want to eliminate that negative 2. That way I don't have to distribute it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I get y minus 3 equals negative 11 because this is what that would look like. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Add 3 to both sides and I get y equals negative 8. Two ways. You decide which way you like the best. I'm going to show you why the division way is easier for fractions and decimals next. So this is 3 fifths, parentheses m minus 6, equals negative 9. So let me just show you the distributive way and how this would work. Okay? So we're going to distribute it. Well, anything times 1 is itself. So this would be 3 fifths m minus, well, 3 fifths times 6. Well, that might you have, might have to do that up here. And that gets 18 over 5. And then which would be, let's see, 18 divided by 5 would be 3, 15, 3 and 3 fifths minus equals negative 9. You can already see how this is no fun. <laughs> you have to deal with your fraction a little more. See, you already have to distribute it through your m and then through your other number which might make it difficult for you in the two-step equation if you don't like fractions, okay? Now, I'm just going to start the distributive or the division way here, and I'll show you how much easier this is because I'm going to divide by 3 fifths. I'm going to divide by 3 fifths. Now, we did this the other day. It would be negative 9 over 1 times 5 over 3, and I can do some reducing. goes in once, goes in 3 times. So this is negative 15. Okay, so then I'm going to bring what I have left over m minus 6 equals that negative 15. Add 6, add 6, m will be negative 9. Now if I would go over here, I'd have to add 3 and 3 fifths. I'm going to add 3 and 3 fifths. Well, it's, I have a negative 9, so it's going to be totally, it's going to be harder for me to do. I have to deal with a negative and fractions. Eventually, I'm going to have to divide by 3 fifths. So this way is so much easier because you really only have to deal with your fraction one time, and it's at the beginning. I, honestly, you can do it either way, but I think if I know most of you, you like it quick, easy, and simple, and that's the quick, easy, and simple way. Here's another example. This is the same thing. You know, you could distribute through here, but then you'd have to take 3.2 times 3.7. Eventually, you're going to have to do some dividing with your decimal, and it's going to be way more steps than the division way would be. So I'm just going to quick go through the division way, divide by 3.2, divide by 3.2. Let's see, 4.8 divided by 3.2 is 1.5. Then you do x plus 3.7 equals 1.5 minus 3.7 minus 3.7. Notice I wrote that horizontally because if I would write it like this, a lot of you would try to subtract like that and it would not work out. So if I have 1.5 minus 3.7, I know it's going to be a negative number. So I'm just going to take 3.7 minus 1.5, 2.2, and it be a negative 2.2. And that's it. Okay, here's another one if you want to try by yourself. I'm just going to quick, let's see, this one won't divide quite as nicely. So if you want to do distributed property, because I can already tell my 6 isn't going to divide by my 15 very well. So I'm just going to quick do with this. Do distributive way, minus 24. Notice how I'm kind of always writing my subtraction in a horizontal way because it can tell me if I have to keep change, change or not. So this is going to be, let's see, 39. I believe that's right, equals 6y. Divide by 6, divide by 6. Well, it's not going to come out perfectly. 6, 36. It's going to be 6 and 3, 6, or 6 and a half. Or if you want to write it like this too, either one. So I would honestly look before I do it to figure out what's going to work the best. A lot of people, if you have whole numbers that like to distribute, that's great. I'm one of those people. But if I have a fraction or a decimal, I'd rather do it a different way. Here's a story problem for you, and we're going to work on these a little bit more in class together. It says Natasha buys five bottles of juice. 
She has coupons for 65 cents off the regular price of each bottle. After using the coupons, the total cost is $6.20. What's the regular price of the juice? So first of all, we know she's going to spend a total of $6.20. Okay? The question is, what's the regular price? Okay, So that can be our X. Uh, and then it says up, up on top, it says she has coupons for $0.65 cents off the regular price. So if she has coupons for $0.65 cents off the regular price, it's going to look like this, X minus 0.65, because that's the regular price, but she has $0.65 cents off of it. Now she's going to buy five of these bottles. So this is one bottle, but she's going to multiply that whole one bottle times five. This is what the the equation would look like. Um, and then again, you could solve using your division or distributive property, whatever you're most comfortable with, um, and go from there. So let's say I'm going to just do the distributive property because I don't want to do it with the decimal. So 620 divided by 5 is $1.24 equals x minus 65 cents. I'm going to plus 65 cents because that's what it's, I'm going to find out what it was before I took that 65 cents off. I get nine, and I get a dollar eighty-nine. Now that tells me that's what the regular price was first before she took the sixty-five cents off. Here's one more, and you probably can figure it out yourself. It says Julie's ordering tickets for a concert. She buys three of them. There's a fee of four seventy-five per ticket. The total cost is a hundred and eleven seventy-five. What's the price before the fee? So we know she spends a total of one hundred and eleven seventy-five. And we know she buys three. But there's a fee for each one. We want to know what the price of each ticket is. So we don't know what the price of each ticket is before. So that can be X. So X. So each ticket's going to cost her the regular price plus that $4.75. So this is just one ticket. Okay. And she's going to buy three of them, it says. So she's going to take three times that one ticket. You could use distributive property again. You could do your division. And that's how you would find the regular price. So if I do that, it's gonna be, I'm going to do the division way, just because I think that's easier because there's a decimal in there. So 111.75 divided by 3 gives me 37.25 equals x. This is not enough room. Hold on, let me move down. So 37.25 equals x plus 4.75. I'm going to minus my 475. I'm going to minus my 475. Oops, it should be minus 475. 3725 minus 475. And you get $32.50. And that's what the price would have been for the ticket before the fee. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll probably do a few story, more story problems um, in the next time I see you so we can get this down. But please let me know if you have any questions. Mark it in your notebook, and I will see you next class period.